to another video. In this video, I want to show you how we can do a rolling calculation such as a simple moving average over a data set using Python and Pandas. Let's get started. The data set I'll use for this video is from coindesk.com. This data is just the price of Bitcoin over time and we're able to select different time periods that we want. I'll link this page in the description below, but right now I'll select the all and then I'll click download. We'll download as a CSV. I'll go ahead and move this over to my desktop. And now let's open it to look at the data. We see that we have a workbook that has the date, the closing price, and then the opens, the highs, and the lows. Let's take this data and do a rolling calculation on the closing price. Let's say that we want a rolling average of the last seven days for the price. We'll go ahead and open up a text editor and we'll import pandas as pd, and then we'll place the Excel file into our Python script. So we'll say Excel file, we'll go over and grab the name of this CSV file. We'll copy it over. We'll drop down and say our data frame is equal to PD and then we'll use read CSV because this is a CSV file and pass in that Excel file. Let's go ahead and print a few things to the terminal that way we know that we've read this in successfully. We'll say print data frame and then let's pull out the columns and then let's print data frame dot head five. We'll save and open up a command prompt or a terminal. We'll type Python 3 and then Bitcoin rolling averages is the name of my Excel file. Once we execute, we see that we've read it in successfully and we have the columns listed here. Now, since we only care about the date and the closing price, let's go ahead and make a new data frame where we select only those. We'll say new data frame is equal to the data frame that we already have dot LOC square brackets. Now the first value is the row selection, so we'll put a colon. The second value will be the slice of the data frame that we want. So let's say that we want the date, we'll put a colon, and then we'll say closing price. We'll actually go down and copy this to prevent me from typing it all and paste it in. Now let's print new data frame to make sure that we had the slice that we want. So now we have the right selection where we only have a date and we have the closing price. To do a simple rolling average of the last seven days of Bitcoin prices, all we need to do is to use the pandas function dot rolling on our data frame. We'll say simple moving average is equal to new data frame. We'll use that dot rolling function. We'll specify the window. So this is the number of entries in the data frame that you want to go into your calculation. And since we wanted it to be seven days, we'll put a seven here. And then let's set a keyword argument of on on the date field. We're setting this because the default argument for the rolling function is to do this operation on your index. However, we don't want to do a rolling calculation on our date field, we want to do it on this closing column. That way we do the calculation on all the other columns of our data frame other than the date field. Since we only have two columns, that means we're only doing the calculation on the closing field. Now all we have to do is to specify the operation that we want. So since we want an average, we'll use the function dot mean. Now we can drop down and say print simple moving average. We'll save and execute. Executing, we see that we now have a simple rolling average from our data frame. We know that it works because our first six, which don't have seven entries before them to do the calculation, return an NAN. There's other operations that we could have done instead of taking the average. We could have done a min, we could have done a max, could have done something like a summation. We're also able to change the window size to however many that we need for our operation. Pandas makes it super simple for us to do rolling calculations on a data set, so use this to your advantage whenever you can. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know. Until next time.